Rachel and I have been experimenting with dyes. We've been inspired by a writer called Jenny Dean who writes books on natural plants and how you can get colour out of them. She's recently uh, republished a book called Wild Colour that's uh, available now and has helped us to get these different colours. In um, archaeology, when you explore things that's from the past, sometimes little fragments of textile survive even way back to the Iron Age, so before the Romans came. Um, at the moment, we're exploring the Saxon period. And here we've got um, a range of colours that are based on little fragments of fabric that um, have been found on archaeological sites. So the usual ones that turn up are uh, from madder, which uh, use the root, that's the reds, Weld, which use the top of the plant, and woad, where you use the leaf from the first year. Sometimes you can over dye, so we've got greens here, which are a combination of the weld and the woad. These very bright colours are actually achieved by using mordants. Um, a mordant means some sort of, um, probably a mineral, something like alum from the ground, uh, which will help to make the colours brighter and last longer. We've got another sample here of other types of uh, dyes, which are made from, some of them are from barks. So up this end, we've got uh, alder buckthorn. Um, that's been changed with iron. You can use iron to actually change the colour. This one's birch bark and um, this one's walnut. Th this greeny colour here is the birch has been modified with iron and it's turned out a sort of greeny colour. Um, and sometimes you can use wild plants from um, the fields. So this one here, this group here is yarrow, which is a very common plant that grows on, on the downs. So it makes the yellow and again it turns green if you use iron in it. Um, and this one's called Dyer's Greenweed. Um, so perhaps we could go and have a look at the plants now. Mm -hmm. 